looking back now, any new re uh, revelations or the same regrets about not finishing them off when you had a chance? Yeah, so many opportunities. Um, I don't know that I've ever been a part of a game with so many plays where you had the ability to basically end the game um, on offense and defense. You know, two times we have the ball down there going to score and we get six points out of or we get three points out of it. We miss one field goal and make one. And so many times it's just, you know, one guy here, you know, or we're going to score touchdowns there. Or, you know, Matt misses two passes by six inches. They hit both passes hit the fingertips on the two third downs down there. Um, otherwise, he ends up with, with a good day. You know, he hits those two passes six inches lower. He goes 16 for 20, 80 percent. So, um, and then on defense, you know, we have him fourth and 11 backed up. Um, you know, we, we drop eight. We're underneath everything, and one guy comes out of his zone coverage, and Jake goes to run and hits the guy. So, um, you know, there were just, you know, there were probably 20 different plays in that game late. Or one guy doing one thing different would have been different. You know, we had a great rush on the sack fumble, and the ball comes up and bounces over to their offensive lineman. So, unfortunately, one of those days that, that that it happened that way. But it's a great lesson for us, something that we've talked about over and over again for our guys to understand. When you have teams down, you've got to be able to finish them, and that's something we hadn't done throughout the year, um, which is why I was frustrated so much after games. You know, people would ask, "How come you weren't smiling and excited?" Well, because I knew that if we didn't. If we didn't get this fixed, it was going to come back to haunt us, and unfortunately, we didn't. Washington scored on all but three possessions. What was the root cause of the defensive struggles? Yeah, they did a great job. You know, they had a bye week coming in, really um, came very prepared, and then their quarterback played. You know, this game was life. You know, he made so many great plays. Um, you know, really played well, and then we didn't tackle very well. You know, if you combine those things, you get what what happened. Mobile Q QBs have killed the Trojans in the recent past. Locker was able to break contain. Uh, pretty consistently. Is that the defensive line's responsibility of maintaining rush lanes, or what's the what's the cause of that? Well, it's a bunch of different things. Sometimes it's that, and sometimes you know it's linebackers. So it just depends on the calls and the way things are going. And um, unfortunately, you know, we didn't do a very good job of that Saturday night. Tackling reared its ugly head again. Is anything to change there, or is it just? Get better at it without being able to tackle practice. No, we, yeah, we've got to wrap up better. You know, way too many times in this game. You know, we've had some missed tackles in the past this season, but this game, you know, we're throwing shoulders in there too much, trying to knock people out with sh shoulder tackles, and that, that's not what we teach. You know, we teach um, guys wrapping up, and so we've got to go back to that all week in practice. Is that an emotional thing? You think they got wrapped up in the sort of battle of that game? I don't know. You know, it's not being disciplined, and doing things right. You know, we've got to do things the way that that we're taught to do them, regardless of how high energy the game game is or, or what quarter it is. We've got to do things um, extremely well. The final two drives were pretty similar offensively. Alan Bradford would break a big run and then sort of fizzled out. Did he get tired? How do you explain that? Yeah, he, he played a really good game, um, you know, just a, a little inconsistent, you know, um, they're late stopping his feet again, um, which has been his problem. And, um, you know, and then we had some opportunities where we just, you know, missed one guy here. You know, there's Stanley's going to, to kick out block and he's going to kick out to Sam linebacker and we're going to walk in the end zone for a touchdown, you know, game winning touchdown. And Stanley's shoulder had already been blown out in the first quarter. So he tries to, he can't hit with one of his arms. So he tries to hit with his other shoulder and the guy crosses his face and makes the play. So, you know, it's not just all on Allen. It's, it's, it's everywhere, you know, something we could have done better and I could have called better plays. Matt Barkley had an interesting quote after the game. He talked about being a little bit afraid this week of throwing picks, and maybe that's what led to a couple of his incompletions late that he didn't want to make the mistake. How do you counsel him away from that mentality? Well, I don't, I don't know, you know how accurate that is. You know, after Matt watched the film and realized, you know, um, I think that happens more if you see guys just throwing the ball away because they're afraid of it. You know, he's still, go like I mentioned, you know, he's six inches away, you know, from being 16 for 20, 80 percent in that game and, and throwing a touchdown to David there. Um, so we've just got to make those plays next time. You said the kicking competition is open this week. Joe Houston won it pretty easily in camp pretty quickly. What what are you looking for from Jake Harfman to, to really push in this week? Yeah, we'll see. We'll open it up. We'll let the guys kick and see how they do. Um, you know, um, unfortunately, Joe had a great camp and was kicking the ball extremely well. and. And now we've been missing them, and you know it's the same, you know it's the same thing that we talked about early in the year that unfortunately came back to haunt us in a close game that we were getting away with um, early on. I mean, is there anything you can do in practice to mirror that intensity of the moment? I mean, that's so much to do with kicking. It's, it's yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do it during our team periods and have everybody around try to make it as loud as possible. Um, you know, to try try to make it most game like. The last couple of years, the defense has been picked on a little bit. Do you think they have a confidence problem? 
Probably, you know, when, when we give up the numbers that we are, um, you know, that's always a concern, um, you know, but if we go back to playing really well fundamentally and, and we tackle better, you know, then, then we won't have to worry about that. But um, until we prove otherwise, you know, yeah, it's an issue. And so, you know, it was an issue after week one, but we came back and played well. Hopefully, you know, we're, we're going against some more traditional offense this week and hopefully we'll play better. Yeah, it's kind of a chicken or the egg question. Does swagger come first and then you sort of play like that on the field or does it go the opposite way? What's your take? No, I, I totally believe that production comes first. You know, if it's going to be true, you can fake swagger. Um, you know, if you're productive and you're playing really well, then the swagger comes to it because it comes through confidence and it comes through execution. Um, otherwise, anybody can go in and make it up, you know, and, and you know, that's, not, that's not reality. Just like Washington, Stanford is coming off a, a loss. What do you expect from the Cardinals this week? Same thing that you get with them all the time now under Coach Harbaugh. Extremely physical in all three phases of the game. Their guys play very, very tough, and um, you better strap it on. You know, this is some old school football. Both teams are running the ball well. Um, you know, I, I would, I would think there's going to be a lot of balls handed off in this game. Luck is another mobile quarterback. Is he even more of a natural passer though than, than Locker? Well, Jake's really good. Obviously, you saw from that game, um, he, he's going he's gonna to play really well this year. Um, but this this guy's really, really good. And, you know, this guy's extremely accurate. Um, he was the most efficient quarterback in the conference last season. Now he's, I believe, he's second behind Matt. So, um, you know, we're going to have our hands full again. Stanford is more power than speed. Is that a better matchup, do you think? I hope so. <laughs> the other way didn't work very well. Um, so we'll see. Um, you know, they, they've got plenty of, of good skilled players, too. You know, um, they're powerful up front, but then they can break some. So we're going to have our hands full, and we're going to have to fit extremely well on defense. Oregon put 52 on their defense. So what, what can you exploit? What, what, what did Oregon exploit that you saw in film? I think Oregon could put 52 on the New York Giants. Um, so I don't think that really means much. You know, Stanford's defense was playing great up to that game and was playing great for a part of that game. So um, this is a much improved defense, a defense that's playing extremely well, a defense that shut out UCLA. Jim Harbaugh did not make many friends at the Coliseum last year. He went for two uh, in a blowout game. Do you use that as motivation? Do you use last year's game at all? No, I, I don't. I and mean, we're not really in position to throw stones at people that go for two. So um, I, I had a chance to spend some time with him in New York. Um, you know, and I think he's doing a phenomenal job with their program, and I got great respect for him. Are you disappointed uh, with what you've gotten from Dylan Baxter on the field in terms of production? He was barely involved in Saturday. <laughs> yeah, that's not his fault. You know, I, um, that, you know, we didn't put him in, um, and that's how games are going to go. You know, if guys, you know, it was very difficult for me to take Allen Bradford out. You know, when he's averaging 11 yards a carry during that game. You know, and his first run, you know, goes for whatever it was, 42-yard touchdown or something. So that's a that's difficult to pull him right there. Um, you know, so you know that that's just the case. If a guy gets a hot hand, and it would be the same if you know those games that we were putting Dylan in. You know, over prior to this game, the three weeks that Dylan played, he had more touches than anybody on our team. So, um, you know, we we look to continue to develop him in different ways. You've used the boxing metaphor this season. Is the message this week to get up off the canvas? Sure, you got to get up and fight. Yeah, and you don't have to win every round to win the match.